farewell and be careful. Curtain is not to be trusted. I'm fairly sure. Why are you? Who are you waiting for? Ita Ita Rainus. I hope I can help. Uh, ooh, Mage's Guild. Delphine can get you a spell to summon bound armor if you're interested. And if you're able, of course. Of course. Uh, rumors. I don't know what Archmage Traven has against necromancy, but the first thing he did after taking over the Mage's Guild was to ban its practice. Right. Brevil? Brevil is an important trade center. Uh. And a rich melting pot of Imperial, Khajiit, and Argonian cultures. And yes, a bit shabby and shop worn. Yes. A bit. Hmm. Easy. Right. How does Eta Realis know so much about Tamriel? I suppose I should move forward. Whee! Right. Oh, we're going to we're going to visit the. It's going to be a little dark. Ah, we we're going to visit the chapel, weren't we? Just so we can see what we're doing. Right, it's strange feeling we might get attacked by some of these. Aren't things? No. Good day. Can I? No. Are you just randomly in here? Can I? Oh, more of these. More writing. Is there any way I can? Assume I can't. Yeah, the whole thing's been desecrated, hasn't it? Hmm. Random potions lying around. We should investigate. Right. Hmm. Blood leads to here. The Knights of the Nine book. The Knights of the Nine by Caroline of Solitude. Few people now remember the Knights of the Nine, but in their time they were famous throughout Citadel. Indeed, throughout the Empire, for a brief period in the early days of the Septim Empire, their adventures were the talk of the land. But their renown, as with so much else, was swallowed up by the War of the Red Diamond. And today, even the location of their Priory House has been lost to history. The Knights were founded by Sir Amiel Lannis in 3rd Era 111, following his heroic return in the War of the Isle, with the high purpose of recovering the legendary Crusader's relics, the weapons and armour of Pelennal Whitestrake, which have been lost for thousands of years. They were born out of the sense of optimism and ambition that characterised the first century of the first, Third Era. Tamriel was united and at peace for the first time in many centuries. Nothing was impossible. The fate of the knights was established early on, or the fame, when Sir Amiel led them against the Worm of Elinglen to recover the Curus of the Crusader, which had been not been seen since the First Era. Soon, the greatest knights of the day were lining up to join the new order, and the Priory of the Nine in the West Weald of Citadel became a magnet for the great and the good. The knights were the toast of the Empire. When Beric Vlindrel joined the order, the scion of one of the great noble families of Colovia, it was clear that the Knights of the Nine had become the Empire's most prestigious knightly order. In relatively short order, the Knights reclaimed three more relics, and their fame soared to new heights with each one. No one doubted that they would eventually succeed in their quest to recover all eight relics. Sadly, this early promise of the Knights did not survive the ravages of the War of the Red Diamond, which tore apart the Empire beginning in the Third Era 121. At first, it seems that Sir Amiel was able to keep his knights out of the war, but the very success of the knights undermined this, as many of the knights came from important families from across the Empire, which were lining up on either side of the bloody civil war. Sir Beric was apparently the first to leave the Order to join the war on the side of Sepphoris, carrying the sword and greaves of the Crusader into battle with him. Many of the knights seem to have left the Order shortly after this, some joining the war on one side or the other. The end of the Order was as igno ignominious as its beginning was glorious. Following the victory of Sepphoris in Third Era 127, Beric Vlindrel became an important figure on the winning side. 
it seems likely that he was behind the imperial decree which officially dissolved the Knights of the Nine in Third Era 131, although in truth this was little more than a formality. Despite Sir Amuel's best efforts, the Order had never recovered from the bitterness of the Civil War. What happened to the various relics originally recovered by the Knights of the Nine? The sword and the greaves went with Sir Beric, but where he bestowed them is unknown. The gauntlets famously lie immovable on the floor of the Chapel of Stendar in Coddle, where Sir Casimir left them after his disgraceful murder of a beggar in Third Era 139. The location of the Curus is a mystery, lost to history along with the eventual fate of Sir Amiel, who was last reported still living alone in the empty Priory of the Nine by a passing traveller in Third Era 150. And so the Knights of the Nine faded away into history. Well, we'll uh, take that. I'm sure we've got some stuff we'll sell. The, uh... Hmm. What was this? Rain Sand. Oh. The good energies of the human body have not surrendered their mysteries easily to you. You are now a journeyman of restoration and can cast journeyman level restoration spells. Rain Sand. Book 4 of... Book 4 of... 2920. The last year of the first era by Karlovac Townway. Uh, three Rain Sand. Oh, is that. What? Is that third of Rain's Hand? 2920. Cold Harbor Oblivion. Sotha Seal proceeded as quickly as he could through the blackened halls of the palace, half submerged in brackish water. All around him, nasty, gelatinous creatures scurried into the reeds. Bursts of white fire lit up the upper arches of the hall before disappearing, and smells assaulted him. Rancid death one moment, sweet flowered perfume the next. Several times he had visited the Jadra princes in their obliv oblivion, but every time something different awaited him. He knew his purpose and refused to be distracted. Eight of the more prominent Daedra princes were awaiting him in the half-melted, domed room. Azura, Prince of Dusk and Dawn. Boethia, Prince of Plots. Herma Mora, Daedra of Knowledge. Hercene, the Hunter. Malakath, God of Curses. Merun Stagon, Prince of Disaster. Molog Bal, Prince of Rage. Sheogorath, the Mad One. Above them, the sky cast tormented shadows upon the meeting. Fifth of Rain's Hand, 2920. The Isle of Arterium, Somerset. Sothasil's voice cried out, echoing from the cave, Move the rock! Immediately, the initiates obeyed, rolling aside the great boulder that blocked the entrance to the dreaming cavern. Sothasil emerged, his face smeared with ash, weary. He felt he had been away for months, years. But only a few days had transpired. Lilatha took his arm to help him walk, but he refused her help with a kind smile and a shake of his head. Were you... successful? she asked. The Daedra princes I spoke with have agreed to our terms, he said flatly. Disasters such as befell Gl Gilverdale should be averted. Only through certain intermediaries, such as witches or sorcerers, will they answer the call of man and mare. And what did you promise them in return? asked the Nord boy Weleg. The deals were made with Daedra, said Sothasil, continuing on to... Lachesis Palace. Oh, Iacesis. Iacesis? Iacesis? Iacesis's Palace. This is this. To meet with the Master of the Psijic Order should not be discussed with the innocent. Eighth of Rain's Hand, 2920. The Imperial City, Citadel. The storm billeted the windows of the Prince's... The storm... That doesn't make sense. A, a storm billeted? A storm buffeted the windows of the prince's bedchamber, bringing a smell of moist air to mix with the senses filled with burning incense and herbs. A letter has arrived from the empress, your mother, said the courier, anxiously inquiring after your health. <laughs> what frightened parents I have, laughed Prince Joylek from his bed. It is only natural for a mother to worry, said Severian Chorak, the potentate's son. There is everything unnatural about my family, Akaviri. My exiled mother fears that my father will imagine me of being a traitor, covetous of the crown, and is having me poisoned. The prince sank back into his pillow, annoyed. The empress insisted on me having a taster for all my meals as he does. 
There are many plots, agreed the Akaviri. You have been abed for nearly three weeks, with every healer in the Empire shuffling through like a slow ballroom dance. At least all can see that you're getting stronger. <laughs> Strong enough to lead the vanguard against Morrowind soon, I hope, said Joylek. Joylek. 11th of Rain's Hand, 2920. The Isle of Arterium, Somerset. The initiate stood quietly in a row along the Arbor Logia, watching the long, deep, marble-lined trench ahead of the fla them flash with fire. The air above it vibrated with the waves of heat. Though each student kept his or her face sturdy and emotionless as a true psychic should, their terror was nearly as palpable as the heat. Sothasil closed his eyes and uttered the charm of fire resistance. Slowly, he walked across the basin of leaping flames, climbing to the other side and scathed. Not even his white robe had been burned. The charm is intensified by the energy you bring to it, by your own skills, just as all spells are, he said. Your imagination and your willpower are the keys. There is no need for a spell to give you a resistance to air, or a resistance to flowers, and after you cast it. As you, and after you cast the charm, you must forget get that there is even a need for a spell to give you resistance to fire. Do not confuse what I am saying. Resistance is not about ignoring the fire's reality. You will feel the substance of flame, the texture of it, its hunger, and even the heat of it, but you will know that it will not hurt or injure you. The students nodded, and one by one they cast the spell and ma made the walk through the fire. Some even went so far as to bend over and scoop up a handful of fire and feed it air, so it expanded like a bubble and melted through their fingers. Sothasil smiled. They were fighting their fear admirably. The chief proctor, Thargalith, came running from the arbor arches. Sothasil, Almalexia has arrived on Arterium. Uh, has arrived on Arterium Iacasis. Uh, Iacasis told me to fetch you. Sothasil turned to Thargalith. For only a moment, but he knew instantly from the screams what had happened. The Nord lad Wellig had not cast the spell properly and was burning. The smell of scorched hair and flesh pa panicked the other students, who were struggling to get out of the basin, pulling him with them, but the incline was too steep away from the entry points. With a wave of his hand, Sothasil extinguished the flame. Wellig and several other students were burned, but not badly. The sorcerer cast a healing spell on them before turning back to Thargalith. I'll be with you in a moment, and give Almalexia the time to shake the road dust from her train. Sothasil turned back to the students, his voice flat. Fear does not break spells, but doubt and incompetence are the great enemies of any spellcaster. Master Welleg, you'll pack your bags. I'll arrange for a boat to bring you to the mainland tomorrow morning. The sorcerer found Almalexia and Iacasis in the study, drinking hot tea and laughing. She was more beautiful than he had remembered, though he had never before seen her so dishevelled, wrapped in a blanket, dangling her damp, long black tresses before the fire to dry. At Sothasil's approach, she leapt to her feet and embraced him. <laughs> Did you swim all the way from Morrowind? he smiled. It's pouring rain from Skywatch down to the coast, she explained, returning his smile. Only a half a league away, and it never rains here, says Iacasis proudly. Of course, I sometimes miss the excitement of Somerset and sometimes even the mainland itself. Still, I'm always very impressed by anyone out there who gets anything accomplished. It is a world of distractions. Speaking of distractions, what's all this I hear about a war? You mean the one that's been bloodying the continent for the last 80 years, Master? asked Sothasil, amused. I suppose that's the one I mean, said Iacasis, with a shrug of his shoulders. How is the war going? We will lose it, unless I can convince Sothasil to leave, Ar leave Arterium said Almalexia, losing her smile. She meant to wait and talk to her friend in private, but the old Altmer gave her courage to press on. I have had visions. I know it to be true. Sothasil was silent for a moment, and then looked at Iacasis. I must return to Morrowind. Knowing you, if you must do something, you will, sighed the old master. The Pasigic's way is not to be distracted. Wars are fought, empires rise and fall. You must go. And so must we. What do you mean, Iacasis? You're leaving the island? No. The island will be leaving the sea, said Iacasis, his voice taking on a dreamy quality. In a few years, the mists will move over Arterium, and we will be gone. We are counsellors by nature. 
and there are too many councillors in Tamriel as it is. No. We will go, and return when the land needs us again, perhaps in another age. The old Altmer struggled to his feet and drained the last sip of his drink before leaving Sothasil and Almalexia alone. Don't miss the last boat. The year continues in second seed. Huh. Maybe I shouldn't be reading though. I should be checking up on people. Oliver the Fair. We'll take the key. The Adabala. Why are you reading this? The Adab Adabala is traditionally believed to be the memoirs of Mori House. Consort to Alicia the Slave Queen. While this cannot be historically verified, the Adabala is certainly among the oldest written accounts to come down to us from the early First Era. Why is she holding it? It's got to be relevant. Pelinal! Hmm, definitely relevant. Okay. Pelinal's death. It seems odd. It, it seems like the fact she's holding it, like we've been told, ooh, they've attacked Braville. So this is related to um, the Knights of the Nine. So this is this book is obviously relevant. I'm not sure if I've... I don't think I've read it, though. Um, so we will now read it. Um, right. At Pelinal's death. And in the blood flawed the blood flawed throne room of white gold, the severed head of Pelinal spoke to the winged winged bull, Mori House, demigod lover of Alesh, saying, Our enemies have undone me, and spread my body in hi into hiding. In mockery of divine purpose, the aliens cut me into eights, for they are obsessed with this number. And Mori House, confused, snorted through his ring, saying, your crusades went beyond her counsel, Whitestrake. But I am a bull, and therefore reckless in my wit. I think I would go and gore our prisoners if you had left any alive. You are blood made glorious, uncle, and will come again as fox, animal, or light. Sirot is still ours. Then Pelinal spoke again for the last time. Beware, Morihas, beware. With the foresight of death I know now that my foe yet lives, Bitter knowledge to take to my grave. Better that I had died believing myself the victor. Although cast beyond the doors of night, he will return. Be vigilant. I can no longer shield the host of men from Umeril's retribution. Alicia's youth during the slave years. Perif's original tribe is unknown, but she grew up in Saad. Anon, Anon Sadavar Lid where the Aelids herded in men from across all the Nibbin, Kothri, Nid, al Gemha, men of Krith, though these were later known to be imported from the north, Keptu, men of Ge, men of Gi, who were eventually destroyed when the flower king Nilichi made great sacrifice to an insect god named Scribble, al Hared, men of Ket, others, but this was Sirod, the heart of the Imper... Imperatum Sariace, where men knew no freedom, even to keep family or choice of name except in secret, and so to their alien masters all of these designations were irrelevant. Men were given over to the lifting of stones and the draining of fields, and the upkeep of temple and road, or to become art torches for strange pleasures, as in the wailing wheels of Vindasel and the gut gardens of Sersen, and flesh sculpture which was everywhere among the slaves of the aliens in those days, or worse, the realms of the Fire King Hadhuel were the begetting of drugs drawn from the admixture of daedrons into living hosts let one inhale new visions of torment, and children were set aflame for nighttime tiger sport. Morihouse explains Alicia's names. Then Morihouse said to them, In your tales you have you have many names for her, Alesh, given to her in awe, that when translated sounds like a redundancy. The high high from which comes the most familiar corruptions. Alashut, Esher, Alicia. You knew her as Paravant, given to her when crowned, first of its kind, by which the gods meant a mortal worthy of the majesty that is killing, questing, healing, which is also Paraval, Pavesh, Parathu, Paref. And in my case, for it is what I called her when we were lovers, Paravania. Though she is gone to me, she remains bathed in stars. First Empress, Lady of Heaven, Queen Ut Sirod. And they considered themselves well answered and departed. <laughs>